subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The COVID pandemic has killed over 40 lakh people across the world and over 4 lakh people have died in India. But even at a time when people were losing their loved ones, the question of whether one can catch COVID from an infected person has led to a lot of stigma. In fact, media reports suggest that some families of people who died from COVID are even scared to collect the ashes of those cremated, fearing infection. While there was a lot of uncertainty in the beginning of the pandemic about whether COVID can spread from bodies, now the science is a lot more certain that infection spreading from dead bodies is very unlikely. In this video, we will look at what happens to the cells in the body and the SARS-CoV-2 virus after the COVID patient's death. This is Mohana Basu and you are watching Pure Science. One of the first things that we need to understand about a virus is that it needs a live cell to multiply. This is different from bacteria which can actually multiply almost anywhere as long as the conditions are right. After entering a healthy cell, the virus in a way takes over its internal systems and uses it to produce biomolecules needed for it to multiply. Eventually, the infected cells bursts open releasing the virus that then infect neighboring cells. That is how the virus spreads in the body. Now, every biological process needs a source of energy to function. Our cells, for example, release the energy stored in food molecules through a series of reactions that produce energy-rich molecules such as adenosine, triphosphate or ATP and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or NADH. RNA viruses like the SARS-CoV-2 cannot produce their own energy supply. So what they do is use the ATP from the host cells to fuel the energy requirement of viral replication. But once a person is dead, the cells stop making this ATP. This is because ATP is produced from glucose and fats which comes from the food that we digest and oxygen which is carried by the blood pumped by our heart. So as soon as our heart stops, fresh oxygen supply to our cells is cut off and they can no longer make the ATP that the virus requires. Now the question that arises is how long can the virus that was already in the body survive? In a real world scenario, this will depend on lots of factors. The first is what kind of virus are we talking about? A virus needs to protect itself from the environment because the genetic code it carries within itself is fragile. There are two ways that viruses do this. One is building a shell of proteins around its genome. These shells are called capsids. Examples of capsid shell viruses include herpes viruses and adenoviruses. The other way viruses protect themselves is using a two-layer shell made of fat molecules. These viruses are called enveloped viruses and SARS-CoV-2 is an example of that. Enveloped viruses are more vulnerable in the environment as compared to viruses with capsids. That is why hand washing with simple soap is effective against coronaviruses. Soap and water together are able to pull the envelope apart in activating the virus. Minutes after a human dies, the cells in them become deprived of oxygen and toxic byproducts of cell reactions begin to accumulate inside them. So the environment in the dead body is not very conducive for a virus to continue to survive. However, death itself is not an automatic switch off for viruses. And depending on the amount of virus that was present in the body at the time of death, along with the temperature and humidity conditions in which the body was stored, it may take a long time for the virus in the body to get inactivated. This is where we need to circle back to exactly how the virus transmits from one person to another. During the beginning of the pandemic, prevention guidelines from health agencies around the world stressed the need to disinfect surfaces because there was a fear that if COVID-19 infected person coughs or sneezes, large droplets from their mouths can settle on surfaces. 
It was believed that viruses in these droplets can stay active for days and anyone who touches the surfaces can become exposed to the virus. Over a year into the pandemic, we now have overwhelming scientific evidence pointing to the fact that COVID-19 is much likelier to spread through airborne transmission than by surface contact. This means that there is a much higher chance that you will get COVID-19 while talking to a patient even at an appropriate distance in a poorly ventilated room than touching the same elevator button as one. This transmission is largely caused by aerosols. Humans produce respiratory droplets that range from 0.1 micrometer to 1000 micrometers in size. What is generally known as aerosols are less than 5 micrometers. Aerosol transmission of a virus typically involves the virus floating free in the air or latching onto aerosols, mainly a person's phlegm or moisture droplets, to float larger distances. So when another person inhales this virus-laden aerosol, they can get infected with COVID. Since a dead body no longer breathes, speaks or coughs, aerosol transmission is no longer possible. Another factor is that to prevent residual body fluids from leaking out of a dead body, it is standard practice to plug nostrils and ears of a dead person. So this further prevents any residual aerosols from leaking out. In a study, researchers at the Department of Forensic Medicine at Ames, Delhi looked at bodies of people who were COVID-19 positive at the time of death. Over a course of a year, they collected samples from the nasal and oral cavities 12 to 24 hours after death from 100 dead bodies. All samples came back negative, indicating that the corpses were no longer infectious. Based on this, Ames Forensic Chief Dr. Sudhir Gupta said that the risk of transmission from a deceased person is highly unlikely. There is, however, one more caveat to this. A 2013 advisory from WHO on tuberculosis patients states that TB can become aerosolized from a dead body. Basically, when the body is moved, residual air in the lungs can get expelled or fluids from lungs can spurt up through the nose or mouth. But standard COVID prevention measures that we are already following, such as wearing masks and maintaining a physical distance, are good enough to protect oneself against such chance events. This means that while it is still advisable to not hug or kiss the body of a person who was COVID positive at time of death, it is okay to allow the family members to get a look at their loved one. When the body is being moved, people handling it should wear a mask as a precaution, although the risk of getting COVID from the dead person is negligible compared to the risk of getting COVID from a live person attending the funeral. There is no risk of the virus surviving cremation, so the ashes of a person do not pose any threat of infection. If you like our videos, do consider paying for a subscription to the print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.